Today's lesson is on estimating square roots. Haas is very upset because he just found out that the garden he and Mayhem had designed is too big for their backyard. They only have space for a 130 square meter garden and he doesn't know if he can still make it into a perfect square. What Haas needs to be able to find out is the width of a square that has a non-perfect square area. In this case, 130 square meters. As luck would have it, Ms. Diller is working on a similar problem. Let's try this example with her. First, we want to find a perfect square that is just smaller than 6. Now, from a previous lesson, we recommended that you memorize the first 20 or so perfect squares. This is where it would come into play. If not, you can use this table that we had made. Find a perfect square that is just smaller than 6. That's right, 4. So now we know that the square root of 6 has to be greater than the square root of 4. Now, let's find a perfect square just bigger than 6. 9. The square root of 6 must be less than the square root of 9. Now that we know both our lower and upper limits for perfect squares, let's put these perfect square values into the machine and see what happens. We know that the square root of 6 has to be in between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9, which means that their square roots, the square root of 4 being 2 and the square root of 9 being 3, that means our answer for the square root of 6 must be in between 2 and 3. Now, Ms. Diller would like it to be more accurate, so what she wants us to do is put the missing square roots in between 4 and 9 at the top of the meter. So each line would represent a different square root. So the first line would be the square root of 5, square root of 6, square root of 7, and the square root of 8 respectively. It should be noted that this is not a precise scale and will only give estimated values, which is what we're doing. Now let's put square root 6 on the scale and see what happens. We come up with an estimate of 2.4. This is accurate to one decimal place. How do we know Ms. Diller's machine actually works? In math, a good way to check your answers is to work backwards. What is the opposite of taking the square root of a number? That's right, squaring the number. So in this case, if 2.4 is the square root of 6, that would mean 2.4 squared should give us 6. Let's see if this is correct. Now, if you are already proficient at multiplying decimals, please feel free to fast forward this section. However, right after this, I'll show you a way of multiplying two-digit numbers that you can do in your head. When multiplying decimals, ignore the decimals for now, and just multiply the two numbers as if they were whole numbers. So we'll start by multiplying 4 times 24, which is 96. Next, we put down a 0, and then we'll multiply 2 times 24, which is 48. We'll add the two numbers together and come up with 576. Now we'll go back and put in our decimals. So we have one decimal place in our first number 
one decimal place in our second number, so in our answer we need to have two decimal places. So our answer is 5.76. Now, as promised, I'll show you another way you can multiply two digit numbers where you can actually add the numbers in your head. We'll start by finding out how many hundreds there are in the question. So to figure out how many hundreds there are, we multiply the tens column together. In this case, two times two. So we know there are four hundreds. Now, to come up with the number of tens, we need to multiply both ones columns by both tens columns. So we do what I like to call cross multiplying. We multiply four times two and two times four, which gives us eight plus eight, or sixteen tens. Finally, we find the ones by just simply multiplying the ones column together. So four times four is sixteen. What's nice about this way is now we have simple numbers we can add in our head. So 400 plus 160 is 560 plus 16 is 576. At any rate, whichever way you do it, 5.76 is less than 6, which was our desired goal. So let's try a bigger number like 2.5 and see if we come up with a closer, closer answer. Let's try multiplying 25 times 25 in your head, like Roy Boy does here. So there are two times two hundreds, which gives us four hundred. Next, we do the cross multiplying. There's two times five plus two times five tens, which is ten plus ten, or twenty tens, which is two hundred. Finally, there are five times five ones. So now we add the numbers 400 plus 200 plus 25, which gives us 625. So if we square 2.5, we would get 6.25. So now we've come up with a value greater than 6. The fact of the matter is, when you take the square root of a non-perfect square, you get something called an irrational number a number that can only be estimated by decimals. In fact, irrational numbers are decimals that go on literally forever. So how could we get a more accurate estimate than just one decimal place? Well, we know the answer must be bigger than 2.4 and smaller than 2.5. What number could we try next? Let's use the table below to help you come up with an answer accurate to two decimal places. Let's put in our first set of numbers together. So we'll put in 2.4 and 2.5. So that gave us our low estimate and our high estimate. Now we want to try a number in between these two values. Since these numbers are sort of low and high by the same amount, trying right in the middle is a good idea. So 2.45 would be an excellent number to start with. So let's square 2.45. This is a very close answer. Notice it's very close to 6, but it is slightly too big. So let's try one just below 2.45 and see what we get. So we'll square 2.44. And we come up with an answer that is also close, but is just slightly smaller. So we know our answer's got to be one or the other. Which one is closer to 6? The closest answer accurate to two decimal places would definitely be 2.45. If we carried this procedure on, we could find a number in between 2.44 and 2.45, which would estimate our square root to three decimal places. Give it a try and check your answers with the use of a calculator. Let's check back with our friends Mayhem and Haas, who have now met up with Ms. Diller. Let's take advantage of this opportunity to review how to estimate the square root of non-perfect squares. First, we must find two perfect squares, one just smaller and one just bigger than the number inside the square root, in this case 130. 
Haas has come up with the lower perfect square, and Mayhem has come up with the larger one. So now we know our answer is somewhere between the square root of 121 and the square root of 144. Now we'll take the square root of these two perfect squares, and now we know our answer is between 11 and 12. Next, we'll try to figure out where exactly the square root of 130 fits on our square root scale at the top. And then we'll estimate where that fits with the decimal scale at the bottom. And we have our answer. Remember, to check our estimate, we can work backwards and square the number to see if we get the value inside the square root. So we'll take our first estimate of 11.4 and square it. Now in this case, it's a little lower than 130, so our next estimate, we would choose a number greater than 11.4. If the number turned out to be bigger than 130, then our next guess would be lower than 11.4. So let's do what Haas suggests and try 11.5. So now 11.5 squared is greater than 130. Now we want to choose another number. It's going to be in between 11.4 and 11.5 because 130 is in between 129.96 and 132.25. In fact, 130 is a lot closer to 11.4 squared. So like Mayhem suggests, we're going to choose a number very close to 11.4. In this case, 11.41. That gives us a number slightly bigger than 130. So now, for our two decimal estimate, we've got 11.40 or 11.41. The closest number to 130 is still 11.4, so that's our best two decimal estimate. Ms. Diller once again has some follow-up activities to practice and maintain our estimating skills. Challenge your classmates to see who can estimate the square roots of non-perfect squares to the closest value. Try it for one decimal, two decimal, or even three decimal places. You can use a calculator to check your answers. Ms. Diller would also like to remind you to limit your use of calculators always to maintain and practice all of your math skills. <laughs> <laughs>